Now on to this episode 4, we're gonna talk about the piston rings, the setup, and also the tech about the valve seal, the cylinder head is being assembled, of course, your favorite, the assembly of the actual engine. We're gonna drop in the pistons carefully and let you guys know all the steps that we do and why we check what we check. And then of course, this one, we drop in the head, and of course, tell you more about the things that, that we do and we check while we're assembling an engine we drop it in and let you guys know all the tips and tricks that we have learned along the way and pass it on to you guys so you know this one is just right for you And on the previous episode, we assembled the crank into the block, torqued everything in sequence, and now here, there's the new water pump, tensioner, and the blue printed oil pump. Of course, we will not beat around the bush. We're up here now, gonna install the pistons, and all, of course, the head. But let's go back to the block now. Let's wipe it off. And just because we were assembling the crank, it could have had assembly lube and whatnot on the bore. So we have to spray it with WD-40 for now. We actually wiped it earlier, but this time it's got to be with WD-40 because it's going to have some flash rust. So we have to make sure those are removed or the bore is clean. Okay, now let's wipe it off with a paper towel. All right. Hold it. See. Yep. Oh look, it's flash rust. The re that's the reason why it's light brown because flash rust happens really quick. So you gotta after cleaning the block, you gotta spray it with WD-40, oil it and whatnot. So it's gotta be good. Okay, now let's speed it up. Okay, we gotta keep going with this. Make sure it's everything is clean, and then we go with the piston rings. Ta-da! All right. We're gonna check the ring gap of the top ring. So we're gonna show you. We actually like to check the ring gaps on where the top ring is level when it's a top dead center. And then after that, we check it on different levels. So let's go with the top dead first, all right? Let's speed it up, all right? And then we use the pistons to push it in deep, like level to the top ring, like the first line. Okay, look, just a bit right there go a little bit more all right there now let's go with all all the rest of the three speed it up all right yeah okay now we get the filler gauge okay this is a 0 0.017 0 0.018 and 0 0.019 okay uh, 0 0.017 is kind of snug so we just double check with the 0 0.018 if it doesn't go in all right yep now here it's still snug and then 0 0.018 does not fit all right yeah perfect then this one again number three and then the 18 yep all right then here it fits good and then the 18 is not fitting okay that's when we know it's gonna be good all right now here at this angle look that's where the piston rings are or the top ring when it's a top dead so we check on that right and okay and then here we check the lateral side or the one across this way it's gonna give us a vague idea if the bore is actually oval or not but this one i'm not worried because we can actually see the cross hatch and now here again this one is lower than top dead center this is about like one inch below the bore and we're still gonna check the gap there to make sure it's consistent and this one is so that's how you check it okay now let's head on to the workbench all right here we go we opted not to use our stand, but here we labeled it one, two, three, four. You gotta be organized because being organized means you don't skip any steps. So that's what's really important here. All right. So now here, let me show you 
But the second ring is actually the scraper ring. And let me focus here. Wait, wait. There. You can see on the bottom, it has a ledge or a, a, or a, a, a shoulder. That scrapes oil. So the second ring is actually a scraper ring. And we'll talk about the piston rings more later. Wait up on that. Here. Now, we're going to assemble the pistons. But for now, we're going to install the piston rings. All right, now the rings are installed. Now we're going to lubricate it with our uh, special lube, which is actually 70% ATF and 30% WD-40. You can vary the mix a bit, but as long as the majority is the ATF, the WD-40, the purpose is actually just to thin out the oil. This way, a crank up and the first initial run, the rings easily seal into the bore. They easily wear in, you know, they break in. This is one of the tricks that we do. This is why we don't actually do any break in, all right? Well, we know we do a bit, at least like a hundred kilometers just for the piston rings. That's it. Not for the bearings, nothing because we got the clearances. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Now let's install these things. Let's go. But first let's lubricate the journals, the rod journals. That is, okay. We turn it so we get the back side. Okay. Now let's get the piston number one. Okay. Careful with the rod caps and the bolts. All right. There. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to the block now. All right, now, okay, carefully, we don't ding the bores with the rod's big end. All right. There. Okay, now we tap the ring compressor so it's flush to the board, to the deck. Then we tap it. Okay, there. So easy, right? You don't need cool tools. All right, that was easy. Now here is the interesting part with the D series or the single overhead cam. Because the main girdle is like this, we'll show you when we put the rod caps. It's a little bit more work than usual. But okay. We turn it here so that you can actually put the rod caps uh well the big ends rod cap. Sorry. Alright. We turn it a bit more. Okay, there it fits. Wait, it has to be has to go in. All right, there. Okay, now we oil the rod bolts a bit, the studs, I mean, and then we put the rod bolts because the factory setting is twenty three feet pounds torque, so we just leave this at hand tight for now. But see, look at this. On the other side, you can't reach it, right? So you have to hand tight and then turn it a bit to the other side and then put the rod bolts there. So we got, wait, let's lubricate it first. All right. And then the rod bolts. Sorry about that, it's motorcycles. All right, there. Just be careful you don't drop it. Well, you still pick it up, but it's just out of work. Okay, now it's hand tight. Yes, a little bit more to make sure the rod caps are snug to the connecting rod. Then we turn on the other side. You can tighten it even more. All right, there you go. Now it's waiting to be torqued, but let's install the rest of the pistons, right? Let's turn this. There. Oh, you can hear the piston rings. All right. Yeah. Okay, now on to piston number two. Let's grab this and the rod caps and the bolts. All right, let's go, let's go. All right, careful. All right, now here we're gonna time lapse it because, you know, it takes too long. All right, there. Yep. Oil the bolts. And then now we get piston number three. All right. And the rod caps. Careful. All right. And now onto the block. So the ring compressor is quite easy when you're used to it. So, you know, you don't need any special tools for that. 
And the last one, number four. Okay, careful. All right, let's go. Now we're gonna put the last one, and then it's complete. It's an inline four. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now here, you can click here to watch the old video that we, we did with disassembling a high managed motor. It's actually this motor. And you can, oh, it spins really good. Now you can see, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're gonna torque this for now. Okay, now it's 23 feet pounds torque. All right, on the rod bolts for the single overhead cam. Okay, here, there. Okay, this one. All right. And then we time lapse the rest because it's gonna take too long. And I was saying earlier, later we're gonna show you the the rocking of the pistons, and even then this has brand new piston rings. And remember earlier we checked the ring caps, it was fine, right? So as we open this when it was a high mileage motor, the piston rocks. And locally people would say, Me a log piston. Hear that? And that means they're trying to dupe you into rebuilding the engine when that's not even a reason. I mean, here, you hear that? I mean, even with brand new rings, it still rocks. It's normal. So the trend of fooling people, na may alog yung piston, it's kind of bullcrap, right? All right. Here's the finished short block. See the pistons. Oh, you can hear the piston rings, the, the new ones. It's good. And of course, you can still see the good cross hatch. So this block is actually quite mint. Yep. Oh yeah. All right, sorry, I'm using one hand on that, so it's shaky. All right. Okay, now let's go to the head. Now here's the head. We've assembled it, we got some good exhaust valves, we replaced it and then polished it to, to defeat the, you know, the sticking of the carbon and also for heat retention. And you can see here, we left the stock valves that's burnt and you can see it. The reason why you can see it's burnt is because it's all white. Look at that. And so, you know, you have to be aware for those tuners or builders that do this for you guys for pops and bangs, you better watch out because they know you're going to blow it up. So that's like more work for them and more profit. Hmm. Now let's look closer to the assembled head. Look at that. It's actually just the intake is just port matched. Let, let me show you the valve seal. Oh, there, that's a Super Tech Viton exhaust valve seal, and the intake is Super Tech valve seals too. Wait, I can't show you. It's hard to see it. Wait, let's turn the head a bit. The thing is, the reason why I'm showing you this is because locally we all we already have a price list on our page. And of course, a lot of them would ask for discount or ask if this can be adjustable in the price and all that. What they don't get or what they don't understand is this. Because this customer, oh there, you can see the intake valve seal, sorry. Because this customer paid everything without even asking for a discount, this is how we show grace. We actually take an extra effort and spend extra just for their engine. Look, super tech intake and exhaust valve seals. This way, this is a lot better than OEM, or it's gonna last way, way longer than it did before. And that's what they don't understand. Our price list has remained low. We never really increased our prices. And at the same time, if they go for our service, we put a lot of extra effort into their engine. And only in the end will they realize they got a lot of freebies. Now let's drop this onto the block, shall we? All right, now here are the dowels. Because this engine has never been opened before, look at the dowels, are, they're not mangled. And I really don't get how people mangle this because look, we removed it, it's not even mangled. So it's easy to use. So people should stop mangling the dowel pins with their pliers. Okay, now we drop in the head because I want to show you something on as far as engine builds go. Right, wait, let's align this. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there. Great. 
there all right now look close the reason why honda suggests to put honda bud on the corners or on the drains of the block because look at here if you don't use honda bond or three bond and just copper spray those corners like here is gonna start leaking that is why most of the engine builds that you see are always wet with oil on that corner which is not clean or not good you know so let me remove the head and show you the spots that honda recommends it's actually in the manual so just read it up read up on it wait let me see here the oil drain where is it wait here 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 and here so when you think about it that's really important because some people actually pry the head up from the block on those corners and that's another thing that i don't get and hate when people do that i don't know why they do that another tidbit is that as you remember in the episode three we ran the main studs or the main bolts into the threads oiled up this way you lubricate the threads of the block you do the same thing with the head stud you oil the threads and just make a pass like hand tight it all the way before you even finish torquing the head that is important and you gotta click here to watch this video because on the next episode we'll talk about crankcase evacuation system and what we did and for you to follow that really well you gotta watch and observe this video really good and of course in the description below we'll have the piston rings link and of course also the plastic gauge because we've all done that on this block that we did so that's all for you guys